we're studying the relationships between synthetic modifications of DNA and RNA and the observed artificial fluorescent properties that provide these new tools for biophysics. My interest in the field probably started in around 2008 when I began uh, making some, some not commercially available nucleic acid modifications for a friend and collaborator. We were making some fluorescent building blocks for DNA and in the course of doing that work, I wondered why some fluorescent properties just weren't available. The glow of vibrant colors under black lights at a nightclub or most people have seen these images from cell biology where you see cells brilliantly illuminated against a dark background. This phenomenon is fluorescence, where something absorbs a short wavelength of light and emits a long wavelength of light. My lab is engaged in creating new technologies to impart this fluorescent property to DNA and RNA. It's just a really nice opportunity for discovery. We're making fluorescent analogs to put into DNA and making glowing DNA doesn't really get much cooler than that. Usually where we go looking first is association. So we look for ways chemical changes will be related to specific types of fluorescent properties. Brightness is one of them. So if we modify cytidine, one of the letters of the genetic code in a certain way, does it become more brightly fluorescent or more dimly fluorescent? We're interested in high quality photophysical fluorescent studies of both so that we can understand the effect of the modifications that we make. We've been interested in creating ways to modify letters of the genetic alphabet so that they turn on their fluorescence in response to the formation of double-stranded DNA. And that, that's a property that generally hasn't been available. So we had a hypothesis based on past work for where to go looking for this property, but we didn't know exactly where to find it. We had to make a series of chemical modifications to cytidine to see of the genetic code to look for this property and study all of them. We found it in the course of those series and we have ongoing investigations to better understand the phenomenon and to make it better. We're all the time working with our quantum master instrument to measure the fluorescence of new molecules we've made in a variety of contexts so we can understand how and why they work and how we can make them better in the next round. Recently, in 2017, in the Journal of the American Chemical Society, we published our findings um, using this data to show the fluorescence turn-on effect of our cytidine analog that I've described. And we're preparing a new publication now that includes a lot of fluorescence data on different compounds we've made that reports on our studies of the relationships between structure and those fluorescence properties. So yeah, our use of this type of instrumentation has really been a backbone of those studies. Uh, so behind us, we have two reactions going. Uh, the one on the left in red is actually one of our analogs that's non-fluorescent, but because of its absorption properties, uh, we think it might have some interesting uh, application with um, absorbing um, high-powered lasers. And then on the right is one of the steps in making the synthesis for a uh, that compound that by itself is not very fluorescent but becomes fluorescent when it's in double-stranded DNA. Without the spectrofluorometer we couldn't measure the properties of anything that we're creating so this is this is a real workforce in our lab. Sci science is a uh, it's not easy to do these studies there's, there's a lot of of hard work, a lot of elbow grease that's involved in making new molecules, testing what they do, working up all of the data, completing your studies. So it, it would be just absolutely impossible for me to do all of this stuff on my own. I have a team of really great students who makes all of this possible. The two of them, Jesus and Ben, have even today been working with this instrumentation to make fluorescence measurements. Personally, uh, I think getting published is uh, really exciting because you're essentially doing science that no one has ever done before and everything is brand new, you know. So I, I find that extremely exciting. Uh, I'm always excited by the next thing. <laughs> so we, we have a completely new design for a, mod a fluorescent modification of one of the letters of the genetic alphabet. I can't say what it is right now, but we think it's going to have some really special properties that will be widely useful to the community. So hopefully within a year or two, we'll be able to tell everyone how it works and what it's able to do.